It's your boy Rocky Maverick, and I'm building with You Listen Media. You know what's up. Niggas making plays like the NFL. We're gonna be the best unless gotta work. We're gonna pass the test, no stress, gotta work. I put middle fingers to your mean demeanor. Stop the niggas rapping about a millimeter. Here with Rocky Maverick, songwriter, rap artist, music producer, entrepreneur. <laughs> I mean, doing everything, man. How you feeling? I'm good. I'm all right, man. I'm in a good space. Um, got my group going on and things like that. Um, just the normal stuff. Just getting ready for the ramp up for the summertime. Get okay. my thing started. Yeah. Your group? What's what's your group? Um, well, you know, it's actually our group. You mm -hmm. know, what I'm saying, um, me, Hazy P, mm -hmm. Dynasty Red, mm -hmm. your boy IV, mm -hmm. and Thriller Thrill. We call ourselves um, Glass Half Empty. So, nice. yeah, man, we we've been doing well. That's what's up, man. So I want to kind of start the interview off um, kind of like from the beginning and then sort of working our way up. Yeah. So my first question is, you know, how would you describe your childhood? Oh, man. Um, <laughs> I had like, as far as like, you know, uh, like black people, they would say I was spoiled. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> um, I was the only kid. And I gonna say I got everything I wanted, but I got majority of the things that I wanted. Mm -hmm. Um and I was the only child, mm -hmm. so it was kind of easy, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Then my grandma was really involved in my life, mm -hmm. but, like, right around, like, high school, maybe the end of middle school, she got sick, like, from dialysis and stuff like that, so she couldn't do much. Mm -hmm. And that's when I did start seeing, like, not being able to get my way and get things, going to school, mm -hmm. you know, with not top-tier clothes yeah. and stuff like that and dealing with, you know, being fucked with because of it. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So yeah, yeah. man. Um, that's 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 so. Where it was just a single parent. How, did you have any uh, involvement with your father? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like my, that? me and my, <clears throat> like my old dude. He was in my life. You know what I'm saying? Um, I live with my mom, but like you know, go over my father or go over my grandma's house on the weekend. Mm -hmm. That's how it was. And then, like, if my father, my father was married for a minute, so he married someone, uh, his childhood sweetheart, and, like, they separated in high school. She had kids. Mm -hmm. And so then I had stepbrothers. I had never had brothers, so then mm -hmm. I had got stepbrothers. And then so I was introduced to Boy Scouts mm -hmm. and stuff like that. All this shit helped me out, you know what I'm saying? Dope shit. Um, shame to say me and my father are estranged now. We don't mm -hmm. talk. Um mm -hmm. But, Personal crazy But at shit. least, you yeah. know, he was there, you know? No, I mean? no, no, no. I like, I mean, he did the part that he yeah. needed to. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I ain't find out how fucked up he was until I was grown. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> it's cool. You know, it is what it is. <laughs> hey, man, at least he, you know, he did his part. No, no, nah, nah, so for real. I'm good. No, nah, it ain't yeah, nothing like that. Yeah, I'm that's, I'm all right. that's, that's what's up, man. You know, so uh, my second question would be, like, you know, how would you, how has your music, uh, evolved from the time you first started till rapping now? Um, I remember, like, starting off, like, um, I had friends that rapped already. Mm -hmm. And then so, like, they were kind of already seasoned at it. I, I started off with poetry. Mm -hmm. So I was doing poetry, writing a lot of poetry. And then I would see them flourishing and doing their thing. And I was kind of, like, on the outside looking in. I wanted to be... Maybe better than I was, or I thought I was, whatever, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, finding it in, like, an identity, because, and most rappers will tell you, like, when you first start rapping, the first thing you do is um, the artist that you like the most or you listen to, you kind of sound like them at first. Mm -hmm. So you kind of write songs like that and things of that nature. So then once you start writing songs and then you write them to your friends, say, oh, yeah, that sound cool, but, you know, you might want to tweet this because you sound like that or I really can't hear you on this and do like that. Mm -hmm. And then you work with all these different styles and then the next thing you know, you might find a really good pocket. You know what I'm saying? And then from there, you can build other styles around that, you know, that pocket. So for me, like, when I was, before I did Black Cat, like, the stuff I was recording with myself sounded way different. I was carrying my in, I mean, like, my in words, like, you know, like, yeah, you know how I do, oh, yeah, that's yeah. where it came from, oh, yeah. But then, like, 
I remember like when I brought out Black Cat and that was kind of the style I was doing and using. This girl was like, yeah, you hard, but you should stop carrying your N words like that. You sound like you're retarded, like a <laughs> retarded person. Like, And I was like, the fuck? You know what I'm saying? But it was always something that people either liked I mean, I I don't even say like they loved it or they hated it. It was like, that's hard. Or did some people like, man, that's way too unorthodox. Uh So then as you start building more records and I was going to the professional studios and I'm hearing my voice different like that. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm working with different cadences. Mm -hmm. Now I'm working with different... um, punchlines, similes, just just setting things up more med- medley to the songs than just saying words, not tripping. Mm. Not, I mean, because the words can, you can say a lot of stuff, but if you don't have the melody, then it won't hit right. So, so like, the transition from poetry to rap, like, how was that? I mean, it's not hard. It's just uh-huh. putting stuff to a beat. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, so you, <clears throat> your rapping is, you. Well, I like poetry, but to a beat. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, anything is. I mean, because, I mean... Me personally, even when I rap, I'm going to listen to the beat and I mm. kind of get the beats per minute in my head. Mm-hmm. And I don't really want to sit there and listen to the beat that much while I'm rapping. I kind of take it off, turn off the, the sound mm-hmm. and I really listen to what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Then, you know, I might get two, three bars in. OK, let me hit the beat music, see where I'm at. And I know I'm on time because my mental has already got the beat in my head. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I mean, it's it's always poetry over a beat. So... You say you started with poetry, but did did that make you want to rap, or what, um, what made you want to rap? No, nah, not really. Um, what made me want to rap is just people reading my poetry and saying I should rap. <laughs> That's where that kind of started. It was like, oh man, you do poetry, you should rap. Like even when I was listening to music, I never wanted to. I wasn't tripping off of rapping. I was more tripping off of making music. Mm-hmm. I mean, I mean, I mean making. Poetry, because it was just at a time where I was kind of fucking up in school, doing really bad, and my bird had, like, took me out of all of my extracurricular activities. I couldn't play no ball. Mm -hmm. I couldn't do none of that. But um, I had to have a after school, like, I had to do something, like an elective at the end of school, and that was poetry. That's what I Mm -hmm. picked to do. Mm -hmm. So I would do that after school, but I would have to come home. So I would come home literally and like I couldn't do nothing literally like because I was fucked up. I had like three F's on my first report card. So my mom was like, nigga, no, you can't do nothing but come home, do your homework, come for until you get this shit together. So Mm -hmm. I did that for a whole fucking semester and I probably did like five poems a day and I'm not lying. Whoa. And talking about folder was this thick by the time I got to be be able to come back outside. So then I come back outside and then my friend can come over again and he like (laughs) reading all these poems. He like, bro, what the hell? He was like, you need to start rapping. I'm like, I don't know. And then you know, stuff just started going in line. But that makes sense because I've seen you you know, write your verse before, and you can, you one of those artists that can kind of just hear the beat and just sort of yeah. punch in, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? So that started early. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I forgot we, I forgot we, we had done some music together. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You've been on my studio before we was doing so, yeah, it's, yeah. You know, all of the stuff I was doing before just prepared me to be able to go and do it on a professional level. Mm-hmm. And once I start going to the professional studio, once I start, paying professional people to make my covers, do my videos, um, and things of that nature. That's when my that's when my cloud started building. That's when I started doing my thing, getting mm-hmm. love. You know what I'm saying? So who are some of your musical inspirations? As um, far I mean, as artists. It always like the first person that made me think about and want to rap was Eminem. Mm-hmm. So that was the first person. And it was like, I had heard other people like Tupac and all that stuff like that, but up until then, it was just like, um, oh, you hear music, you dance to it. Mm-hmm. Oh, you hear music, it makes you feel good. It never was like, oh, I hear music, I want to bust a freestyle. Mm-hmm. I wasn't even around people doing it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? In middle school, so it went like that. I remember getting the tape, and I was like, that's why I said I was going through the phase of not having the shit that I used to, so I was getting fucked with a lot. Then I went to private school in Mm. in elementary. Mm. So going from private school, then having to go back to public school, in middle school was a culture shock. Because then Mm. I went from like praying in chapels and doing all that shit to 
niggas like pressing me yeah. <laughs> for just being me. Mm-hmm. No brother, no sister, none of that shit. So it was weird. So it was like that. So when I got the Eminem, when I got this Eminem tape, I remember this dude was like, I was like, what's that you listening to? He was like, man, this whack ass white boy talking about all this crazy ass <laughs> dumb ass shit. He was like, I don't even want this shit, bro. Here, you can have it. I was like, Okay, and I so happened to have a tape player. I said, yeah, Fuck it. yeah. I put that shit in, and I was like, "This nigga." I was, it, it, it was like everything I wanted to say or do, and felt. It was just like I felt like that he moved around, like uh-huh. me moving to different schools. Uh-huh. You know, him moving around, doing yeah. all this shit like that. It was like, okay, like a person that's being bullied or the oppressed person, we got a voice too. Mm-hmm. And then that actually made me start standing up for myself. Yeah. I went to school and started fighting people back because. Yeah. I'm listening to him like, okay, you know, I'm not finna let this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do some shit. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try some shit. This nigga yeah. said, I, I hit a person with a tray before, I, and I, that's the first time I got suspended. I hit a nigga in the head with a tray. You know what I'm saying? Like, so it was just different. Like, I, uh, thank I, you, I, I yeah, never, I'll never forget. You that. got somebody hitting the head with a tray. Yeah, man. Like, I'm pretty sure he's had he, his music has influenced people to do way worse than that before. So yeah. yeah, so you know, that was a big influence, and then from there. DMX, mm-hmm. fabulous, and just start going down a hole. But like to hole. what you, but but to what you were saying, mm-hmm. you first thought of music as something you just did for pleasure. But when you heard Eminem, yeah, you that was like an outlet of expression. Yeah, definitely. You know, definitely, um, definitely. That's what he made you feel like. Yeah, I felt him. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like you know, I mean, and then. You know, even me and my wife, that's why she's my wife, like, she's listening to M too. So when I play Eminem, but then we was playing songs and we was reciting, like, the first album is the best one, like, the mm-hmm. first one. So we played the first one and we was, like, co we was, like, rapping them together. It was, mm-hmm. like, we you both. You talking about uh, Slim Shady LP? Slim Shady LP, okay. yeah. That's my favorite. So, yeah. Like, that's, I bumped that album for, like, four or five years, bro. It was just, like, <laughs> it was the soundtrack to my life, like, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, like. You know, and so that's why I said when I was creating, I was like creating music, sounding mm. like Eminem, doing stuff like that. My friend was like, bro, you know, that sound cool, but you sound like somebody else. And yeah. rap, it's not a good thing. You should really try to find your own right. and find yourself. And so I remember when that happened, and you know how uniquely I am now. When somebody hear me on the record, they know it's me yeah, now. Yeah, you can't, yeah. you can't yeah, distinct it. It's very, like, oh, that's Rocky. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's mad. Like, you know, rap so, style, for yeah. sure. And it's it's interesting that you know um, Eminem was one of your you know inspirations for rapping, you know, especially the way that you do. And lately, you know, I, I don't know if you've heard, but uh, Dr. Umar talked about Eminem being considered one of the greatest rappers. He said you know? that. Well, it was a con. He was they was having a conversation about Eminem okay. being one of the greatest rappers in. Umar was basically like no white man could ever be. Oh, okay. The okay. greatest yeah. of anything. Okay, you okay. Know, black. No, I, I thought you was. I was like, I was surprised. <clears throat> no, no, that. no, like, no. You know, no. like nobody white. <laughs> no, but I, I just kind of wanted to get you know your perspective on it. Like, oh. can a can a white can a white person you know be the greatest at anything black? No. <laughs> I thought about it for a second, but I'm not. I'm, I ain't gonna say anything black. I mean, like, look, we have things in life that we've been doing. Like, black people are so creative. We've been doing things first before anybody was doing it. Uh-huh. They just try to make it seem like we weren't. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You know, like, yeah, a white person, he made up a basketball. He made up the hoop and all this shit like that. But mm-hmm. once niggas started playing it, yeah. it wasn't the same. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, so I'll say that, no, Eminem cannot be the greatest rapper alive because there's a person by the name of Jay-Z that lives. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's why. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> and what's funny is, like, in high school, I never got why people like Jay-Z so much. Now, I used to listen to him. Mm-hmm. I heard him. Yeah. But I wasn't listening. Yeah. I didn't get that shit. Like, all that brick talk, bird this, talk <laughs> that, cars this, da 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 da. I was yeah. like, okay, like, da, 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 da. yeah. Four years ago, but maybe, maybe not even four years, three years ago. You know, you know what I do. I do my ride shirt thing. I be driving yeah. like this. So I was like, one day I was like, man, I'm, I'm going to listen to. I'm today. I'm riding. I'll be out for like ten hours a day. Uh-huh. I'm finna listen to every Jay Z album. Mm-hmm. While I ride. 
by the time I got <laughs> to like uh, American Gangster, I'm like, he's the greatest <laughs> ever, ever. I ain't gonna lie, there man. No, ever. Reasonable doubt hit different when you. Well, when I you mean, yeah, up. you're. You know what I mean? Like when I'm you're a, a kid. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a black yeah. man now. Yeah, yeah. So now listening to it, I. It, it hit me totally, totally different. different. Totally yeah. different. And I was like, whoa. Yeah. Even listening to him on Renegade, you know, I was one of those guys for years, like, man, Eminem killed him on that. Yeah. Listening to it then in the perspective of him, I was like, I'm like, my guy was really, yeah. he was really yeah. speaking. Yeah, you know what man. I'm saying? So, like, yeah, and I like, you know, um, I, I don't like to say that a white person can't be good at anything, a black person <laughs> be the great, but as far as rap, nah. We, I, we, I, I, we, yeah, we. I, I, I don't think he definitely so. got the gist of what you mean, bro. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, so um, in 2016, you made a video about the 2016 presidential election. I believe that was Hillary, Hillary Clinton and uh, Donald Trump. Oh, that, yeah. Uh -huh. That election. Yeah. And um, in the video, you talked about voting as a strategy and how we weren't going and how you weren't going to vote in that election, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, in the vid in the video, uh, you suggested that voting for Hillary Clinton or Donald Trump was like voting for the lesser of two evils. Mm -hmm. And in the video, you asked a very profound question in that video stating, how can we reimagine a world where we don't have to choose evil at all? Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, I was wondering if you could sort of elaborate on on that just a little bit. I know you created a video, but yeah. for those who haven't seen it. I mean, like, I mean, everything has a competitor. So it was like mm -hmm. Pepsi, Coca-Cola, Sprite, Sierra Miss, Democrat, Republican, mm -hmm. <laughs> Hillary Clinton, Donald Trump. Uh -huh. She lied to us so much. She mm -hmm. lied. She got caught up in so many lies. Yeah. <laughs> And then at least this nigga Donald Trump just a gangster. He just out there with it. And I can respect it. But the man don't like black people. And he's done uh, racist things, you know what I'm saying? Even from, I can't remember the famous name for it, but what he did, you know, when the kids got accused of the rape and stuff in, in the park in New York, and then how he published the whole thing in the paper. I can't yeah, remember. But like all of that, all Central, of those things uh, are blatant things. What, that, what was it, Central Park? It, it, it's called something. It's it's an actual name for a slogan that. they have for. It. I can't remember, but he he done he he basically um, published like when it came out, he made out a you know he put like some in the front page of that mud and it was it was like totally racist and totally bullshit, you know. So like he's had his times, and then even with the whole Charleston thing and all of that, you know, what I'm saying inciting the riots, yeah, Central and Park Five, yeah, yeah, all of that happened you. afterwards. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So. um I think in life, what's crazy is we'll never you'll never get over there. We choose the less mm -hmm. we 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 try to choose the lesser of all evils every day. I think from getting up to going to making yeah. decisions, what we got to do. Yeah. We live. Some people live in a in a in in hell, having to go to work, having to take care of a family they don't want to, coming home to somebody they don't want to. So it's it never it'll never stop. Mm -hmm. It's just is it's a part of our lives, you know what I'm saying? Cause now what? I, I don't even been keeping up with the election this year. Mm -hmm. He gonna win this year. Yeah. We you know, he you know, yeah. I mean that's what it's looking like. Yeah. And um I remember in that video you was like you wasn't voting. And is that the same energy you bring? No, 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 no. Uh, the year after he won that year Mm -hmm. I made sure I went and voted and not get his ass in again. I went, I mm -hmm. went to, I went and voted for Biden. But look at him. <laughs> I mean, fuck. At, at least Trump gave some money out. He, he. I was good. <laughs> and I ain't being funny. Like that man gave a lot, a lot of money. He made sure a lot of poor people got paid. If he wasn't racist, he tried his best to show that then. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, you know, hey, go and pop another pandemic out, my nigga. Let's do this shit. Let's run that four years back. I need that check. I want that PPP loan again, nigga. Shit. Yo, I, I don't want that PPP loan no, back, No, I ain't paying down back. I was good. I actually so many, owned so the business. So many people locked up behind no, me. No, no, no. See, that's the, see, that's what I'm saying. Our black people got to be informed. We think just because a nigga filled out a PPP loan, 
He did something scam. <laughs> no, I own a company, mm -hmm. a business. You don't own a small business. Mm -hmm. And I also do independent carry on my own. So mm -hmm. I was able to do that. It was the niggas that was owning the small business that said they got 50 employees. Yeah. And you, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, so, you hey, definitely, I, I, for the people who were responsible, you yeah. know, that. And you didn't have to pay a dime of that back. All they had me do was sign some paperwork. Right, right. I hope they don't come back for me later. Because <laughs> <laughs> I ain't ready for none of that shit. But they was like, you good. How they gonna give me that money? I'm sorry, I got, how they gonna give me that money, but they wouldn't even erase my student loans. This money, they dirty, bro. Oh, uh, man. man. <laughs> yeah, but that's a whole other conversation. Well, yeah, yeah, that's a, that's yeah, a whole yeah. other one, man. Um, maybe I asked you this one. Um, What's up? How did the, uh, the 2020 uh, pandemic affect your music career? Oh, uh, look, it was like a gift to me. Mm -hmm. To be honest, because it made people had to sit at home. I remember when it first happened and they was like quarantining people. Mm -hmm. You really had nothing to do. You had to sit at home. Like I was just playing 2K, mm -hmm. you know, um, smoking a lot of weed, drinking, eating. I gained a lot of weight. I was skinny. I was like 130 something before the pandemic. Man, you still skinny. I'm 150 <laughs> now, bro. I feel good. I take my shirt off. I look nice with my shirt off. I know this. Don't do me. Anyway, bro, um, it went good for me because I was getting that PPP money mm -hmm. and I was putting it in my music. <laughs> I was bringing out videos every other month. You remember that shit, nigga? I was killing it and still going to work. I was paid, boy. Yeah, uh. so... I man, I took advantage, nigga. Like I came out the pandemic and it, I did sixteen in the stick. Yeah, I dropped Dolo. I dropped two albums in one year. You got, you got I went bangers. crazy. Yeah, so yeah. pandemic did me well because people was at home with nothing to do, mm -hmm. just looking at their phones. Yeah. And so now you scrolling up and you seeing me, and I was doing my thing. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's what's up, man. Mm -hmm. Um, in the previous interview, you mentioned how being a rapper is the only profession where you judge off everything you say and do, and how actors such as Denzel Washington isn't criticized in the same way. I was wondering if you could elaborate on that. I got a question. Where you get these quotes from? <laughs> <laughs> you doing, yeah, you doing a great job. Because you said something. I'm like, this nigga is quoting me. I better stop saying stuff that I, I can get quoted for this shit I'm saying right here again. Ask me that shit one more time. I don't even remember when I said it the way it happened, but I want to hear it again. I'm for real. I'm sorry. Right. Damn, that's crazy. Because I said it. I know I did. I'm, I'm listening. I'm like, when did I say that shit? Go ahead. We not editing nothing in this out either. <laughs> Damn. But, uh, say it again. That, that was that's In the previous interview, you mentioned how being a rapper is the only profession. <laughs> it's cool. It's cool. I'm silly, man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, you mentioned how being a rapper is the only profession where you're judged off everything you say and do. Yeah. And how actors such as Denzel Washington isn't criticized in the same way. I, I was wondering if you could elaborate on that. Yeah, it's, I mean, the art of rap music is storytelling. Um, Battle rapping is saying the worst and most degrading things you can think of to somebody to say to make it sound cool. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if you got a song about robbing the bank and shooting some people and doing all this or doing any type of crazy stuff, it's like, if you ain't really do it, it ain't real. Mm -hmm. I don't want to hear that shit. You fake. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Like that. Well, country people make up stories for songs. Yeah. R&B people do that. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? You make up songs about all type of stuff, different things. Love, mm -hmm. depression, death, drugs, sex, <laughs> a lot of sex. Yeah. Um, And it should be fine. It shouldn't be. It's a lane for everybody. It's a lane for the mumble rappers. It's a lane for the LL Cool J's. It's yeah. a lane for the futures. It's a lane. Everybody don't. You ain't got to be like, oh, that shit whack. I know you just don't listen to it. It's like that. So that's all I'm saying. Like, <clears throat> I... I a person go out and depict a movie like an actor. He can go in a movie and he can kill everybody in the movie. And then, oh man, you did a great job at acting. The yeah. art was great. Well, what I'm creating is art too. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I think that's what I was getting from what you said. Because like, I think a lot of people, when they hear an artist and some of the music, it's like, they can't understand that this is entertainment too. Yeah. You know, this, yeah, yeah, this is, yeah. this is, this don't have to be, Real, you yeah. know what I mean. I'm, I, I know it's some people who, who, 
at times they give their real story. But yeah. for the most part, you know, as an artist, you're creating your art yeah. and it's entertainment. Yeah. You know, and people need to have a better understanding yeah. of that. You yeah, know? like even I've had times me and my wife be in a car and it was like a personal song. Like I was it was even a song, it was like a personal song. He was talking about something. She was like, Ooh, I could tell he just went through and he just went off on somebody. I was like, how do you know he talking to somebody? He just could be making something. And I was like, so you think every song that I make, I'm personally, like if I make yeah, a, yeah. a song about love, I'm talking about you? Yeah. I'm thinking yeah. about all the hoes I had. What you talking about? Shit. I'm sorry. This is the truth. It's, you just put you all these different <laughs> things that you lived in your life, you put it in the music. It ain't about you all the time. Damn, just because I made it and said it. I, right, man, right. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> exactly. You take it too literal sometimes. <laughs> like, oh, he talking, oh, me, he talking about Nicki Minaj. Girl, get a gun, stop. He ain't say her name. He ain't say this. You know, it's like, you can't do that. That's all I'm saying. Let, 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 just let people create. Bro. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> Man. Exactly, bro. You got me dying over here. I'm cool. <laughs> I'm a funny guy, but I mean that shit. You know what I'm saying, yeah. man? It's the truth. Um, yo, so what's the best piece of advice that you've gotten from a music artist or just in general? I was going to be an asshole and say not much. Because <laughs> um, I can't really think about... I mean... I, I've had a lot of people tell me a lot of encouraging things, but it's nothing that I somebody told me this has just made me like, and it's like, oh, that's just the key mm -hmm. to the success of whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't give people too much credit for what you do. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, you get a lot of good advice. Yeah. You get a lot of bad advice. Yeah. You just listen to it and you do what you're going to do anyway. I mean, it's no one way to do what you do. Everybody's like, oh, to get on, you got to do this. Well, no, this person... Didn't and that person did. They found their way this way and forth. You just gotta execute and be consistent. You know what I'm saying? One of the things. I guess that's one thing people. I guess one. Yeah. You know. Keep keep making music. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I think that's important, especially in rap music, because you know we get judged off of. You know how old you are. Mm -hmm. You know you shouldn't. You, oh man, you should stop doing it when you do this like this. Like no, nah, you know, especially in the landscape now. I know half of these niggas in the game. Damn near. 35, 36, 37. Mm -hmm. Shit, you you can't tell. Mm -hmm. You know, look young, look nice, you marketable. Mm -hmm. You spot, come on, let's go and do it. it. Nigga ain't finna tell me finesse two two times, not like 38. <laughs> I don't give a fuck how old they say this nigga is. That nigga is old. I look at him, I know that it's an old guy. They put him together nice though. <laughs> And he got out of jail and he got a story to tell him right there. You put it together, it works. Yeah, you yeah. ain't never gotta stop. The dream is never over, people. Don't 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 let these people tell you it's over. Yeah, man. The dream is never over. That's yeah. that's that's something that you giving free game, you give. Yeah, yeah, no, for real though. I mean, like look, if you take care of yourself, anything is possible. Like for real. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know, you know, um, like think about I'm trying to think about somebody that look young that's in the game now. If they never was out now and they came out now, they'd probably still be, like, dope as fuck. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm trying to just think, you know what I'm saying? But it's a lot of people that if they, they didn't have to come out then to be hard, you know what I'm saying? Some yeah. people are late bloomers, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It happens. Killer Mike, he he waited years and now he got a Grammy album. It's, nah, he, if he not 50, he close he, to close it. Close to yeah. it. I was listening to Killer Mike in high school. Yeah. 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 You know, so yeah, there You're you go. You're definitely right about that. Yeah. But um, do you believe... <clears throat> You can be successful as an artist without support from your hometown. Um, yeah. Um, I think people sometimes they stop because they don't get the support that they want from home. Mm -hmm. And they don't never realize that that's not the most important thing. Like, mm -hmm. and so that's why it's important to keep going to, yeah. keep, to experience things, you know, but I'm also a realist, and I tell people, if you can't get no fans, you ain't got no fans, maybe you're just not very good at what you do. <laughs> um, I've been there before. Like, nobody yeah. gave a shit about my stuff at one point. Even when you like my stuff, I've had some people tell me, like, after work, and um, rest in peace to my nigga G. Like, he was one of the dudes who'd come around when I was doing the stuff like that, and 
This was right before he passed away. Like, I had seen him come to one of my shows. He was like, hey, bro, you hard, bro. He was like, but back then when you first was rapping, that shit was trash, bro. <laughs> I, did not, I could not stand that shit when y'all was coming down. He was like, yo, shit, you sounded hella weird. Like I told you, you had uh -huh. a different sound. You used to change your voice and all that shit like that. Yeah. He said, I don't know what happened, but you changed it up. And now man, he wanted people that kept it real with me. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So sometimes you got to realize if it's working or not. And adjust it, you know what I'm saying? But also understand what you do. There's a lane for it. It's a lane for everything somebody do. You just got to find the people that enjoy you. Right. So, you know, don't trip off that. Get you some people. Get you some fans. And if you ain't working out at home, move around. I yeah. think I think that's good because I've seen so many great artists from St. Louis. Yeah. You know, who I'm telling, I feel like if they were in another city, you know, yeah, it, they their style and what they what they bring to the table would get a whole lot of. Well, you know, I'm gonna get a lot of flack for saying this, but if a lot of niggas that live in New York didn't live in New York, they wouldn't be on. Right? Yeah, that's that's very true. If that's a lot of niggas true. that live if they lived in St. Louis, <laughs> or if a lot of niggas that lived in St. Louis lived in L. A. Yeah, Atlanta. Yeah, New York. If they just lived there, yeah, and every day they got up, and now <laughs> all the big labels were just there, and you can just get up every day. Like it's 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 a little different, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And let's not even go there because I'm one of those people that I don't feel like New York is like the mecca of hip hop. Mm -hmm. St. Louis was doing that shit way before then, but we're not hey, even gonna hey, go there. Man, so we can, be, but I mean, <laughs> uh, I mean, but people get, I mean, people really get upset about that. You know, cause but but when when you got these date these dates and these timelines yeah, though, you yeah. can't refute it. Right. So you know what I'm saying. When I heard people say, "Hey, bro, we was doing hip hop way before New York," I'm like, "Really?" And then somebody get the hip and you to stuff that was on the radio. Yeah. And you get talking to your mama and this was oh they used to do this and all that. You like whoa. And, and so you know you can't help that New York, the biggest city in the world, and they um probably mainstreamed it you know what I'm yeah. saying or they, you know that yeah. you know or they were able to distribute it at yeah. a big like, at a, you know what I'm saying yeah. you know so but like I said that's a that's, that's a yeah. that's a that's a I, uh, that's a I believe the conversation <laughs> yeah I believe the first hip hop um, uh, song uh, Rapper's Delight it got broke on the East St. Louis uh, radio station okay like that record got broke yeah, so that's so so, but 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 that's a but that's a um, but that's still a New York song, like rap, 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 rappers like mm -hmm. that's East Coast. No, yeah. what I'm saying is they saying that artists was creating hip hop before those feel, guys were creating it. Like yeah, like <laughs> yeah, they could have broke that stuff over here, but somebody was making rap music before then. It's all mm -hmm. just, that, yeah. that, that, that's all it is. Like when people, it's almost like um, white people stealing. Uh, America from the Indians and then told us that, oh, like, we got Thanksgiving, nigga. <laughs> like, no, nah, y'all killed some people that took that shit. <laughs> like, you know, now y'all try to work it out in a different way. That's all uh, I'm saying. It's yeah. kind of like that in a way. Yeah. Like, you know, like, that's all. So it's just a little bit of history to throw in there, like, oh, you know, maybe, I think maybe I think that I think the it. history is important. And I think the caliber of the artist is important because I just... And you can speak to this. Yeah. I just feel like a lot of artists from the Midwest, just all of the skill sets that they have is just a higher level. Yeah. You know, that Midwest artists, they have to rap, make the beat, produce the song, make the album cover, <laughs> put do the event. I just feel like Midwest artists, they just, they work probably like a, a lot harder than a lot of guys who may be from, you know. Well, I, I won't say. I, I, I don't want to say nobody work harder than anybody else. But what I would say is, like, nowadays, I mean, it's easy for guys to make their CD covers, mm -hmm. they mixes, and stuff like that, because everybody got a laptop. Everybody got a software. Everybody mm -hmm. got this. It don't mean them shits look good. Trust me. I've had niggas, they make their covers, they should stop making their covers. <laughs> <laughs> they should stop doing their mixes. They should pay someone. Yeah. Everybody has podcasts. They don't have really nice establishments and really good mics. They go yeah. out and buy shitty little mics, and they have a little green screen behind that shit, and it look cheesy. Yeah. And they go and they do their thing, and they got their 20 or 30 people who watch it. <laughs> who gives a fuck? Because you really didn't do what you were supposed to. So yeah. you know, it's cool. It's, it, it's fine. But just because you working, just because you, somebody told me, just because you Working hard don't mean you working smart. And just yeah. because you in the studio don't mean you grinding. Right. You just creating a bunch of music. You hey, know what I'm saying? That's solid, man. Yeah. Um, would you uh would you sign a record deal? 
Yeah, if they pay me enough money. <laughs> At the end of the day, you're selling yourself for something. You know what I'm saying? So you're going to give me a quarter million. You're going to give me $500,000. I got to pay you back some type of way. It's all about me being confident in me saying, okay, I can pay the label back. That's really what it's about. Like People get a deal and they don't look at it that way. They look at it in a whole different way. Like, I'm on. Oh, my God. I'm going to go buy some chains. I'm going to go get some cars. Like, but nah, I think nigga. That's like, the, <laughs> I, but I think that's the biggest thing with uh, artists that sign record labels. You, you never pay it back. Yeah, you do. Niggas how? have paid their label back. Like, niggas got, that's how they get their masters. You don't get your masters unless you pay them back. So niggas like Chris Brown, Drake, and them, they, niggas got their masters. Um, we got to they, 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 they come to the table, they make their money back, then they make another deal. Mm. They give you more money because you did it again. <laughs> you know what mm. I'm saying? Like, oh no, no, no. So this is this is not advanced. This is yours. Like that's how that's how you get treated once you do what you're supposed to do. Now it's up to you if you want to keep dealing. You know what I'm saying? Because your first deal gonna be shit. But if you do well, mm. you you come to the table. I'm, I mean, and I'm you not. Negotiate. I'm not an expert on this, man. But a lot of those uh, those deals, those record deals that are struck, they structured in a way to where you. You never own it. All right. Okay. So let me give you an example. So I think uh, that was the that was the thing that, you know, Kanye West was getting a lot of criticism from. Um, and then, you know, he uh, posted his whole like record label contract on Twitter. And right, but he sounded like he didn't know what he signed before he signed it. That's what it sounds like. You can be mm -hmm. ignorant to what you're doing. It, it, it's like knowing you're getting fucked before you get fucked. Yeah, I know I'm getting fucked, but I want this big love sum of money. What am I going to do with this big lump sum of money you're going to give me? So if they give, if they, if they say, okay, Rocky, we want to sign you, I'm willing to give you a half a million dollars right now. First thing I'm going to say is, okay, is that half a million dollars my money? You're mm. going to give that to me. Is this a budget or is mm. this? What does this consist of? Mm. Okay, no, no, no. We're going to sign you. We're going to give you this, but you got to pay us back. You owe us this off the front already. Mm. And then you got all of this else going on. So while I'm working out here, getting paid $20,000 a show, mm -hmm. $30,000 a show, instead of me fucking off, I'm watching my books, I'm watching the hotels I'm staying in, I'm watching the dollars that I see things are happening, but I haven't paid a dollar for. Where did that come from? Oh, that's an expense. I know I ain't paid for that. So guess who paid for it? The label did, which means I owe it. So then you have to, you have to control these things around you. So then you say, okay, yeah. So you... Ain't no way in your first deal, you give me a 360 deal. Mm -hmm. I know I owe all this money, but I'm everywhere. My song playing on the radio all the time. I'm working so much. Mm -hmm. Every time you call me, I'm on the road. Mm -hmm. I'm making 20000 a show. Mm -hmm. I didn't need 50 shows. How much money is that? That's damn near a million dollars or something. Put your money up. Pay your record label off. Keep you a little money. And then now you... It, but don't people don't do that. They're getting the money so fast, they spending it. I'm telling you, they're getting it so fast, you spending it so fast, you get it, you spend it, you do, do, do. And then what if you don't recoup? Mm -hmm. That's when you fuck. Cause now the label say, well, man, um, shit didn't do well. You know, <laughs> the, the, the album sales didn't do well. Now you was going on tour, you was hot, you was doing that, but now you kind of simmering off. I'm like, all right, well, no, nah, look, I'm ready to do the second one. I'm ready with it like that. They're like, uh, nah. You like, but I got two more albums to go. Nah, you can't do them two albums till we feel like you're ready. And then if they don't feel like it, guess what? You stuck in limbo. Now you still, guess what you got to do now? Buy yourself out your contract, which you were supposed to do in the beginning. Take care of that shit from the jump. But you, you got to know this stuff. Audit your, audit your record label every other year. Pay you a lawyer. That's what Nelly did. Chameleon, I told him. You gotta, he, he did it. They owed him like $2 million of money he didn't even know about. Mm. You just got to be smart. It's business. We not just rappers no more. We should know this stuff, and we got to ask these questions. If you're going to fuck me, I want to know how I'm being fucked first. That way I can choose the position. I you, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> For real, bro. That's right. it. That's it. That's all it is. So, I yeah, you. I signed a deal, with it, and, and I would try my best to make sure I worked that out, and I paid off my... I, I, would, I would treat it like a bill, and I would know what I owe, what I'm looking at, what's coming in, what's going out. You have to know that shit nowadays. You can't just be signing stuff and not knowing what you what you signed. Got you. Um, how, significant, how significant do you think the radio is in influencing what we hear? Not very much anymore because it's too much. It's too many radio. It's too many you listens. Mm -hmm. It's too many 
um, it's the internet now. I can take five hundred dollars and add and put an ad behind my stuff and get way more traction than the radio can give me. I can touch way more people. Mm -hmm. That's what's different about it now. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. no, the radio is a good thing. You know, I remember when getting on the radio was like, oh, I'm on the radio. I was on the radio for like a week and a half, a couple, and it was cool, but. It didn't make me famous. <laughs> like, didn't nobody start running over me at Schnooks to see me and yeah. shit like that. You know what I'm saying? So, no, I would say the biggest thing is putting your money into internet ads, IG, Twitter, Facebook for the family, but, yeah. you know what I'm saying, the home. But you can still do it in there, too. But you can blow up us off IG doing dumb stuff. Wouldn't So, I mean, wouldn't that defeat the purpose of wanting to even sign a record label deal? But, that, but everybody don't make... Yeah, but, but just because that happens don't mean everybody... That, that's why people sign the, the, the label deal because they ain't got the business together. They don't know how to put a tour together. Mm -hmm. They don't know how to do that. And some people want to be famous. Mm -hmm. Like, I wouldn't mind being famous. I, I wouldn't mind being famous at where I go. People know that's what comes with it. Yeah, it's fame, money, you know, the, the thought of being successful forever long you are. You know what I'm saying? But, you know... um, it's perks to signing the deal and not a minute. Then when you don't sign the deal, everything on you. All that money you got, you you spending, it comes the budget, you know, all of that. That's why, you know, some people say I just I'm just a talent. I just want to come, give my talent, and make sure y'all take care of everything else. And it works like that. You know, everybody can't be a entrepreneur and, and own the the record label and the business to know the ends and outs. I'm not saying that, but I think um just all of the numerous, you know stories that we've heard of major artists mm -hmm. who've been played out of their music and don't even own their music, you know, and that's been the big stigma, you know, uh, of signing a, a record label now, it's a record deal now, is that you're not going to own your music. And I think now you got a lot of artists, you know, talking about wanting to own the things that they produced, you know, and I think that is very important for the future and just for, you know, their legacy and the, the legacy that they pass into whoever, you know, their children or whoever their family is. I think that's very important. So, so what if I told you that that analogy is getting old and it's dying off? Owning owning your music? I mean, people are selling it that fast now. Lil Wayne just sold his for $100 million. Uh, I don't and, he got, and he definitely got screwed. But he must have... Hey, look, I put things together. First, he needed amnesty from um, from Trump for something. Then he did that. <laughs> I think Lil Wayne was in trouble with something. He was like, you know what? I need that $100 million right now. And please, Trump, help me get out of here. I need, something was going... But no, people are selling their... Nelly, he, sell, he sold a big portion of his music for like $50 million or something like that. Um... That's why they asked Jay Z like, like, would you sell your stuff? Jay Z, no, he can make probably he can make a lot of money, but he said, but he's he's already a billionaire, so he like, I don't want to. He said, now if my kids want to sell them, they can sell them. He said, I'm giving them to mm -hmm. my kids. He just wanted it for himself. Mm -hmm. But now people are dying off with that. You know what I'm saying? Like imagine, like see that see the thing is like an artist over years, you know, a success. Maybe Snoop Dogg, before, you know, I, I'm just giving an example. You know, you've been in a rap game for 20 years. Maybe you've accumulated $40 million over that time, but you probably spent a lot of money like that. Somebody come to you and say, bro, oh, man, you finally owned your masters. Shit, we can give you, you, nigga, you can make $200 million right now. That's an NBA contract. Nigga's like, I'm going to get that 50% up or that 75 or the whole thing. Michael Jackson, they just sold his for like a billy, a piece of it. I'm just People saying. selling it now, bro. Like I'm just, I'm just saying. I, I, I hear did, you, but, like, that, but it's dying off. People I understand are selling that that's shit. a a trendy thing, but I'm just saying. You know, let's say you're a huge artist. You, I got you, you. You rock. You Rocky Maverick. Yeah. You done all of these great things within hip hop. Yeah. You know, and you sold off everything that you did. Now it come time to tell your story. They want to do a documentary or whatever on you. Yeah. Your 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 kids, your family, whoever, they got to get permission to use something that their father, their person created. They well, have, I mean, as far as the have, music, they would. But if, you, if, if they, they want to, if and if they want to depict your story, they 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 own it. So they can put it out no, however they, they want it. You, well, no, you 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 make you make it seem like they are. That's that's like a. I mean. 
well, a label owns a trademark to an artist or something like that. They own that from the day that you sign anyway. And I'm all talking of that. about the music that you as an artist create. Owning my music and owning depicting my that's two different things. You own my music. That means every time it play, you get the money for it. You don't you can't when you rewrite are, my story. You can't tell me I can't. You can if you own about, it. No, you can't. How? How? I mean, you, I mean, give me an example. I really want I I, I want to know that. When you own something, it's in your possession. Music. Music, right? So, what can they it. do to your music to to when make you, you when, to, when, to make you look out as a different type of person? What could they do after that? I mean, they, you could do with it just like like now. What what song? What song you got now that you can go back and you can change and you can do whatever to? Right I mean, now. that's fine. I mean, e and anybody no, could do that. Like it's, it's, anybody can do that. Yeah. Like I, I I I get what you're saying. Like, oh, you want to use my song to sample it? I don't have the right to tell you if you can or you cannot. I get you, but like most artists, if somebody wants to sample something, they don't mind doing it because they're going to get paid. It's just about you coming to me and saying, like, if you sample my music and I don't know it, I'll be like, bro, you sample my music and you didn't give me no credit for it. You didn't give me a dollar for it. You didn't put my credits on it or nothing. Now, if you sample my stuff, Beyonce sample me, and she say, Rocky, I'm going to give you... Shoot, five percent of the song. Well, I just, and, and, I just want to be clear. And that's, it, it's, it's just my position that I, I got you. that I, that that ownership is the key to to building. You know, you gotta have ownership of what it is that you do. I think that's why you are an entrepreneur. You know what I mean? Because you want to be able to own your business and own what it is that you do. And you don't just want to sell it off for the money because that's only temporary. But when you own something, it's forever. Yeah, I mean, but you can say that, but then you can turn around and die, then your children sell it. Just, I mean, that's the same thing Jay-Z said. At least they have He's, the option. I mean, yeah, but that don't mean that they're going to do the same thing you wanted it to. It don't mean that, but... How do you know they're going to hold on to the wealth that you accumulated all this time in life, and they do as well, and then they don't have to... It, it still can get sold whether you did it or not. It's just about who touching the money. That, that's all I'm saying. I, I, I'm just, I, I'm just saying. I, I'm, I'm just being honest, cause, cause it sounds good. And then some people, like, like I heard Diddy just gave the Danny Kane, they, they masters back. Mm. The girl had to let it be known, like he ain't do nothing special. He was like, well, we, we don't make. He, she said after something happened and something went down, him giving in a masters, they getting like three thousand dollars a quarter, but. You hearing the, the, them saying, him saying, I gave them their masters back. Now you were like, oh, did he really did something? No, them bitches wish they could probably sell off their catalog too for a couple hundred grand right now. All they right. wish they could. So everybody's stuff just different. That's all I'm saying, bro. I wish I could make $200 million off my music. If somebody mm. said, hey, you know you can sell your stuff off or you can make a half a billion dollars. Do I want to touch this half a billion dollars or do I want somebody else later in my estate to say, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and sell it anyway. Now I'm rolling over in my grave. I should have spent my own goddamn money. That's all I'm saying. I'm just being, that's how I feel. Now, you know, that's all I'm saying. And now look at what's happening. Michael Jackson did all of that to keep his 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 masters. Shit, I thought that um the dude from the Beatles, then Paul McCartney all owned them for some minute. I don't know. But either way, he got them back. Now it's people selling it off as quick as they can. Mm. You know, that's all I'm saying. So it's it's a it's a yin and it's a yang. I get it. I just think it's dying off. Everybody don't want to keep their masters no more. They want to cash out. Well, the the people who are buying it and owning it, that's who controlling everything. But anyway, okay. we're going we're going on to the next one. Um, who's your ideal music artist to collaborate with, and why? Do they have to be like local or? It could be anybody. <sighs> I haven't thought about this in a while. Um, <laughs> Cause I really just been kind of doing my own thing. Um, I like Tim's. Tim's, she, yeah, she's just so different and aesthetic. Like her, um, sonically, our sound. Like if I were to do something, I want to do something different. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So just her, um, her mood, her voice is amazing. So yeah, like her, I, I would definitely work with with her. Okay then. Uh, what do you think about artists using drugs or any sort of substance to get creativity? I think it's fine. <laughs> you cool with that? If you want to snort coke, snort coke to get in your mood. Whatever gets you to that whatever point. Whatever gets you to what you need to do, <laughs> yeah. 
we musicians, you know, that's that's what they do. That's why I said that's why they go broke. <laughs> but you know, <laughs> you know, but, you, know you, you wanna snort a line, snort a line, you know, and you know, do your thing. I, I don't find anything wrong with it. No, I don't. Okay. Um who would you put on your St. Louis uh Mount Rushmore? Oh man. Uh, <laughs> hey, you I, ain't you ain't gotta go. You, I can, you if I have you to, I will. No, I, <laughs> look, it's enough people to to do it with. I ain't gonna play that game. Right, Mount Rushmore, how many niggas on that motherfucker? Five? Four. Four. <laughs> Um, I'm not going to put myself there because that's egotistical. So St. Louis, um, Tefpo, because that's, that's where you from. Tefpo, yeah. Tefpo, a verb, a verb. Kenny Knox, Kenny Knox, T Dubbo, T Dubbo. Wow. Wow, that's it. That's, 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 that's why I would go right. That's that's that's, that's, that's it. it. Yo, that's a that's it's, that's. It's I was it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah I, 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 I was I wasn't yeah. expecting that mount, but that's a good, really good mount. Yeah, Mount Rushmore. And then it's a couple <laughs> people you know you leave off. I, I mean, I left off, and I kept thinking like Tank the Machine. Your, your Mount Rushmore is your Mount Rushmore. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's it's like people. You know, I just why I was thinking it's just more. You know, it's a couple more people that their honorable mentions and deserve it could be up there too. But mm. those are the those, those guys. Yeah, yeah. All right, so last question, man. Um, what's your favorite part about making? What What is your favorite part about making music? Um, I guess the part when I was explaining about the Denzel Washington being able to make art and act and do like that. I like just immersing immersing myself in different songs and different stuff and just making different sounds sonically. Like it's like creating. You can't like. Making a movie, you can be who you want. In the song, you can be whoever you want. I can say whatever I want. Mm -hmm. If I want to say fuck the police, I can say fuck the police. <laughs> if I want to say fuck hoes, I can say that. I mm -hmm. can say I can I can empower people. I can say nice things. I can do music is just such a powerful thing. You know what I'm saying? That's why the devil was he was the orchestra of music. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? That's why it's such a fucking, you know, weird thing to mm -hmm. do. It's a weird place to be in. Music controls people it's a symphony it's an orchestra you know you mm -hmm. play the right song right now certain things can happen mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying <laughs> like you know yeah you know right atmosphere so yeah like music is just powerful man and if you can do it well you can control people and i think that's why people are so addicted to music and why everybody wants to be a musician mm -hmm. they see that power they see the feeling of fame. that's why i say people some people don't care about money they sign a deal to be famous they want yeah. to be famous they can be broken famous they don't care as long as they can be famous drink their liquor afford their drugs have some money have nice cars and then as soon as they look up and like, oh, shit, I really don't have anything. It's too late. And then all of us look like, when the label fucked them. No, they're just a bunch of people that didn't take advantage of being taken advantage of. That's all, man. Well, Rago, man, it's been a pleasure, man. Thank you for being on the podcast, man. And, yeah, uh, man. Yeah, we are.